In this lesson, I want to talk about an exercise that you can use as a warm-up when you're practising improvising over chord changes. In the intro, I played over the chord changes of the first eight bars from a well-known standard. See if you can work out which one it was. Step one is to choose a target note for each chord. What I mean by that is choose a note that will be the first note that you play over that chord. Now, thirds and sevenths are always good choices to make as target notes. They're the notes that add colour to the chord. In the intro, I chose the third on nearly every chord. I'll just run through what I did. So the first chord, the A minor 7 flat 5 or A half diminished seventh chord. The first note I played was C, the third. D7, F sharp, the third. G minor 7, B flat, the third. C7, E, the third. F6, A, the third. When I got to D minor 7, flat 5, or D half diminished seventh chord, though, I started on the flattened fifth. On a minor 7, flat 5 chord, the flattened fifth is also a colourful note to choose, so that works well. On the G7, I chose the root up at the top, and the reason for that was I wanted to create a little descending scale passage uh, going from the G to the F, the seventh of the following chord, G minor 7, and then to E, the third of the chord after that, C7. So you've got going down in steps there, and then finishing once again on the third, of F6. Having chosen the target notes, it's a useful exercise just simply to practice playing through the chord progression and just simply playing the target notes. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four etc. I could of course have used different target notes for instance on the A minor 7 flat 5 chord I could have started on the 7th G which would have gone nicely to the 3rd of D7 F sharp. I could then have gone down another semitone to the 7th of G minor 7 F and then to the third of C7. So it's a good idea to practice using different targets and again just practice playing through the progression just with those target notes. Step two is to introduce a simple rhythmic pattern. So on every bar on beat one I'm going to play a half note or minim and on beats three and four, I'm going to play four quavers or eighth notes. To keep the choice of notes simple, on the four quavers or eighth notes, I'm just going to use broken chords or arpeggios. I'm going to start off with a little pickup based on an F6 chord, taking me to the A minor seven flat five. And this is what I'm going to play. Root third, six, back to the third, taking me to the third on A minor seven flat five. Now remember that is now a half note. Going down to F sharp on D seven, and then I'm using a broken chord. Third, fifth root, seventh, which takes me nicely to the third of G minor seven. Then I'm going to play an ascending arpeggio, just simply root, third, fifth, seventh, leading me nicely to E on the C7 chord. And then I'm going to come down an octave and play a broken chord, third, fifth, root, seventh, taking me nicely to the third of F6.
on beat three, I'm then going to play a descending broken chord on F6, sixth, fifth, root, third, leading me nicely to the flat and fifth of D minor seven flat five. I'm going to play a broken chord taking me to G7. I'm going to play it there, and that's the seventh, third, flat and fifth, back to the third, leading me nicely to G. You notice that that broken chord, if we bring the notes down there, you notice it's just an F minor triad. The top three notes, the third, the fifth, and the seventh of a minor seven flat five, is just a minor triad. And you can create useful patterns with that. So, and then I'm going to play a broken chord, down an octave to the roots, back up third, fifth, taking me to the seventh of G minor seven, dropping a step to the third of C7, another broken chord down to the fifth, back to the root, seventh, dropping a step once again to A. Step three is to apply some of the techniques that I've talked about so far in this series to change this from sounding simpler like an exercise to something like an authentic bebop solo. Let's look at what I did in the introduction. On the A minor 7 flat 5 chord, instead of having a half note on the third of the chord C, I played a quarter note first, followed by two eighth notes simply on the root and then the seventh, taking me down nicely to the third of D7, F sharp, and I just played the broken chord from the exercise. I landed on the third of G minor seven, but instead of having a half note there, I played an eighth note, followed by a quarter note on the root, going back to the third with another eighth note. In other words, I put a syncopated rhythm in. Then, instead of going up an ordinary arpeggio, I started off with the top two notes of the arpeggio, the fifth and the seventh, went back to the fifth, and then put a chromatic approach note, D sharp, taking me nicely to E, the third of the C7 chord. Instead of having a half note there, I played four eighth notes, taking me to B flat, the seventh of C7. Now those notes come from the bebop scale. I then played the last three uh, eighth notes from the exercise, that is fifth, root, seventh. On the F6 chord, instead of going directly to the A, I approached it from a semitone below. So if you look at the B flat at the end of the bar before, and then the G sharp at the beginning of that bar, going to the A, that's an enclosure which I talked about in the last video. At the end of that bar, I then put three eighth notes, just going down a scale, taking me nicely to the A flat, the fifth of D minor seven flat five. I went down to the third, and then I just put a passing note, G, in between the third and the fifth up to the uh, seventh and then playing with the notes of this uh, the F minor triad that I talked about earlier on back to the F but then I put a chromatic approach note F sharp taking me to the root of G7 now instead of having a half note there I played notes from the bebop scale again all the way down to the third of the chord and then went back to the fifth. I then went to the seventh of G minor seven. Instead of having a half note there, once again, four eighth notes, 
I just simply went down to the root and came up an arpeggio, the third and the fifth, leading me nicely to E, the third of the C7. But instead of playing the uh, broken chord from the exercise, I just simply played down a scale. Now this time, I didn't play the extra note from the bebop scale. I just used notes from the mixolydian mode. And once again, instead of going straight to A, the third of F6, I put the chromatic approach note. So in other words, I'd used another enclosure there. Hope you found that useful. If you did and you haven't done so so far, I'd be really glad if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, and thank you everyone for all the comments that you're making. It's, it's really encouraging. And if you've any questions, I'd be only too happy to answer them. Thank you.